DisplayPort and HDMI, two of the big display connections packed into some of the latest graphics cards this year is an iGame RTX 3070 in white. It's beautiful, this isn't a review, I said I'd hold off on those. But we're gonna talk about display standards, the two most popular again, HDMI, DP, DisplayPort, whatever you call it, but what about the versions of each of these? HDMI 2.0, 2.1, is 2.0 better than DisplayPort 1.4? Yeah, therein lies the problem. A lot of confusion, I understand that. We'll discuss the relevant versions of each display type and the uh, supported resolutions and refresh rates of each display type in this video. Stick around. Activating Windows is as simple as hopping on over to SCD Key's VIP site where you can purchase an OEM Pro key for a little over 10 US dollars. Use a secure payment method like PayPal, receive your key in a matter of seconds, and activate your OS here to remove that annoying watermark. Click the link below to get started and use my offer code GSL for a sweet discount. So let's start off first with HDMI. This one's the most popular for TVs and it actually is used in a lot of graphics cards as well, though you'll typically see modern SKUs lean more toward DisplayPort or have more display port ports than HDMI ports, and we'll discuss that later. I had originally written this script to elaborate on all updates from HDMI 1.0 to 2.1, but I've decided to just create a handy chart from here uh, for reference, and we'll kind of skim through each. So uh, the first iteration, obviously, is HDMI 1.0 that was released in 2002 with a maximum bit rate of 4.9 gigabits per second. It supported resolutions up to 1080p at 60 hertz, along with eight channel audio. So the big whoop about HDMI at the time, it unified video and audio into a single cable, and that was, yeah, that was a big deal, apparently. Two years later came HDMI 1.1, which merely added support for DVD audio transmission from the player to the TV. You can see how old these versions are. That's really about it for V1.1. Next came 1.2, which added compatibility for low voltage sources, like graphics cards, which is a good thing, in PCs, uh, and also added newer color spaces. This jump was intended to compete with the emerging DisplayPort interface and de-restricted formats for increased compatibility. We'll skip HDMI 1.2a, which was a thing, but really only had to do with CEC compliance. HDMI 1.3 was the next big leap, released in June of 2006. Bandwidth increased to 10.2 gigabits per second, or roughly double that of HDMI 1.0, and added features like 10-bit, 12-bit, and even 16-bit color color depths, depending on, again, the resolution. It also marked the introduction of a new mini connector, but the increase in bandwidth overall created problems with signal degradation over distances beyond roughly six meters for systems running on older standards, right? So uh, people tend to look at this update with a bit of disdain, especially if you were, you know, just a, a random person who happened to have a cable box, and then you had like this new HDMI standard, your old cable doesn't work, why am I not getting picture? You can imagine the horror that ensued. The extra bandwidth, however, opened up possibilities for frame rates in, say, 1080p up to about 120 hertz and 720p at 240 hertz. 4K30 was actually possible here, uh, though support wasn't officially added until v1.4. We'll skip HDMI 1.3a for similar reasons as before. Much of this had to do with CEC compliance and the mini connector modifications. Uh, it changed nothing about resolution and refresh rate. Most of the A and B iterations here do not. Uh, in 2009, though, came the next big step in HDMI versions 1.4. It still had the bandwidth constraints of version 1.3, but it bumped maximum supported, right, keyword supported resolutions to cinema 4K or, well, C4K, that's like true 4K, 4096 by 2160. Yeah, instead of 3840 by 2160. So it's slightly, uh, slightly wider aspect than 16 by nine, but that's true 4K. If you ask anybody who's into video editing, content creation, they're gonna tell you that's true 4K, even though we use 4K for technically not true 4,000 pixel horizontal pixel length. Anyway, yeah, I just, it's kind of confusing. But this is where 16 by 9, 2160 p that's 3840 by 2160, that's monitor 4K at 30 hertz support was added, as well as 1080p at up to 120 hertz. Now the bitrate in this chart suggests that 144 hertz would be possible in 1080p here, but we also need to account for raw encoding headroom, uh, and, and there's a bit of an inefficiency involved here in, in the, the encoding uh, of this video signal, meaning that only about eight gigabits per second is actually available for video here. Uh, version 1.4 included a channel for internet connectivity as 
as well between devices. Uh, ARC or audio return channels were added uh, and as well as support for 3D, which really didn't take off. Um, that was something that people were very polarized about. Some people got headaches just watching like the fake 3D that was on TVs and yeah, it didn't really vibe well. This update also boosted the number of supported color spaces for rich natural looking images. Uh, the high speed cable that you needed for version 1.3 and 1.4 was also notable. You, you needed a new cable uh, to get the full experience with the exception of the ethernet channel, which required again, another unique cable. But anyway, this launch also, I know another thing, included a new connector. This is micro HDMI here, and this is infrequently used by today's uh, modern cameras and some portable devices. HDMI 1.4a essentially added support for additional 3D resolutions and refresh rates. Again, 3D was one of those, that was like a big thing back then. Uh, and HDMI 1.4b marked the shift in production standards from HDMI licensing LLC to the HDMI forum, which is an open trade association that guides the future direction of HDMI technology and specifications. And from that, we've got HDMI 2.0. Now actually what's in this card is HDMI 2.1, but some of uh, the last generation of cards, even some APUs that have motherboards with HDMI ports on them uh, are HDMI 2.0 ports. And that's important because HDMI 2.0 added support for 4K 60 Hertz. And they were able to pull this off because bandwidth increased to 18 gigabits per second. So again, 4K 60, uh, and then that was even, yeah, 24 bits per pixel. So that's eight bits per sub pixel. That's eight bit color, right? Red, green, blue, that's, that's true color more or less. Uh, 32 audio channels are supported along with uh, officially 21 by nine aspect and dual video streams. A majority of modern graphics cards, again, and onboard video HDMI output support version 2.0, keyword modern, uh, but you should always check to be sure, especially if you plan to use your PC uh, for media consumption on a 4K television and you want the full 60 hertz experience. You don't wanna be locked to 30, when you think you're getting 60, trust me. 2.0 boasts enough bandwidth to hold up to 1440p at 144 hertz. This is important for PC gamers. 1080p at 240 hertz and 720p at, oh, this one's kind of a crazy high refresh rate. No one at this point probably cares about it, but it's theoretically possible. In 2015, HDMI 2.0a added support for HDR video and 2.0b the following year expanded it to include hybrid log gamma. By 2017, HDMI 2.1 had been introduced and with it came a plethora of resolution refresh rate updates. Firstly, 4K at 120 freaking hertz was now possible. 2.1 is what the RTX 3070, all Ampere cards, all RDNA 2 cards have HDMI 2.1 ports. So 4K 120 hertz is possible via this HDMI port, something we're not used to. It can even technically support 8K at up to 30 hertz lossless or 60 hertz with a roughly three to one compression. This was all possible thanks to a doubling of the signal rate and the addition of a fourth dedicated data channel, allowing for an aggregate bandwidth of 48 gigabits per second. That's more than double that of HDMI 2.0. ARC was revamped for Dolby Atmos and DTSC and enhanced refresh rates, including variable refresh rates were supported. Now for this enormous leap, an ultra high speed HDMI cable may be needed for more demanding resolution. So make sure that you're using the more, exp not, not, you know, not the thousand dollar ridiculous HDMI cables that really do nothing extra for you, uh, but make sure you're using what would be called an ultra high speed HDMI cable. If it's rated for that, it should out of the box support resolutions up to the ones we just showed you. Speaking of resolutions, 1440p is theoretically supported at up to 360 Hertz. Like what the heck? And any resolution below 1440p ventures into uh, pretty crazy refresh rates. And now finally we move on to the DisplayPort interface. There are three of these on this card and only one uh, HDMI port. What, what, what's up with that? Well, you gonna find out. So these connectors are indented on only one side and are retained with much larger clips than HDMI counterparts. Hence the need for manual levers in most display port cables. You have to push a little button to latch and unlatch them. Version 1.0 launched in 2006 and supported a maximum bandwidth of 10.8 gigabits per second via four data lanes. It could handle 4K playback technically up to 30 Hertz. That's something HDMI, by the way, couldn't do until version 1.4, which was launched three years later, and 1080p at 144 hertz. The following years came versions 1.1 and 1.1a. Maximum bandwidth for these versions remained the same, but additional link layers, including fiber optic lines, were supported to mitigate signal degradation. So the longer the cable, the worse the signal gets over time, the fewer resolutions and refresh rates are supported at those longer distances. And uh, that's kind of more or less been DisplayPort's Achilles heel, uh, just sheer cable 
blink because it, it supports so many resolutions natively. Uh, so this advantage offered additional breathing room for setups spanning larger distances. You could just kind of splice fiber optic lines in between and yeah, not see as big a signal loss. DisplayPort 1.2 came in 2010 and doubled the bandwidth of version 1.1. This is a pretty big deal. This allowed for gameplay and playback at up to 4K60. That's probably why you thought it was a big deal. And 1080p, 240 freaking hertz, along with 1440p at up to 144. Color depth was improved and daisy chaining became a thing between multiple monitors. So it's something that, that was actually really cool. If you only had one display port out and you had multiple monitors that supported the display port interface with that version, you could just connect one display port cable from your card to the first monitor and then another display port cable from that first monitor to a second monitor and not have to have two display port cables stemming from the same card. So. Uh, it was more or less like an efficiency thing. It was uh, just, it was just simple. You know, it was, it was just something cool, something that set DisplayPort apart. Well, something else that sets DisplayPort apart. DisplayPort's really cool. Um, if I had it my way, I'd, I'd just make everything DisplayPort at this point. Now version 1.2 came out in 2013. That added AMD FreeSync support via Vesa's adaptive sync technology. It's a big deal for gamers. Uh, it's not a requirement of 1.2a, but it did quickly become popular uh, for PC gamers interested in a free alternative to Nvidia's at the time, fully proprietary G-Sync technology. The following year, DisplayPort 1.3 was released, featuring an insane 32 gigabits per second worth of bandwidth at roughly eight gigabits per second per lane before encoding overheads. And the efficiency here was roughly 80%. This gave way to a plethora of new streaming and gaming resolutions, including 4K UHD at 120 Hertz and 5K at 60 Hertz. And get this, 8K was even possible at 30 Hertz uncompressed. And this was back in 2014, right? 8K wasn't possible through the HDMI standard, just for reference, until 2017. That's again, three years later. HDMI has been about two to three years behind DisplayPort since the inception of DisplayPort. And that right there, what I just said, is why most graphics cards have more DisplayPort ports. Is that how you're supposed to say it? Is it DisplayPorts or DisplayPort ports? then HDMI ports, because these can do more and they've traditionally been ahead by a few years. And this makes sense from a graphics card design standpoint as well. If your card is capable of 120 Hertz and 4K output, right? So maybe it can, it can push out 120 frames per second in that resolution. You don't wanna be limited by port selection back here. Like if all you had was HDMI ports at the time, maybe around 2016, if, if you were talking, well, that would have been Pascal generation thereabouts, uh, you would have been limited by the HDMI port and you wouldn't have been able to experience on screen the full potential of the card if you were, you know, lowering in-game settings in 4K. Not that at the time there were many 4K 120 hertz monitors available, but still, uh, you don't want the connection interfaces to be the bottleneck. And that's why DisplayPort, again, is so popular with these cards. Now you might be asking why TVs don't all have DisplayPort connections then, what's the point? The, the difference is TV media consumption usually revolves around 30 to 60 hertz picture, uh, video, and graphics cards are capable of much more than that. Uh, gamers typically prefer refresh rates much higher than 60 hertz. Trust me, you go above 60 hertz, it's gonna be really freaking difficult going backwards, even if you're bumping the resolution up to say 4K. I prefer personally 1440p, 144 hertz, over 4K60 when it comes to a vast majority of the games out there uh, that I've played. And um, that's just it. So it, it's more or less appealing to a different audience, whereas when it comes to television, general television consumption, 30 to 60 Hertz is just fine for most people. Now DisplayPort 1.4 launched in 2016 and that included support for Display Stream Compression 1.2 or DSC, which is an encoding technique in displays that results in virtually lossless, quote unquote, playback of ridiculously high resolutions and refresh rates requiring some degree of compression because those refresh rates and resolutions cannot be contained in whatever that bitrate cap is. Uh, and this ratio in DSC 1.2's case is three to one thereabouts. And if this sounds familiar, it's because I just mentioned it earlier with regards to HDMI 2.1. So that version of HDMI and DP 1.4 both support it. Uh, DisplayPort just got to it first. I know it seems like it didn't because we're going in reverse here. We're talking about DisplayPort after HDMI, but yeah. DisplayPort was there much much earlier than HDMI was. And so DSC prompted support for 8K at 60 Hertz uh, or even 4K HDR at 120 Hertz, though they aren't officially listed in this chart because they aren't considered lossless. Version 2.0, that's the granddaddy of all updates, was actually delayed by a few years on account of HDMI advancements with its version 2.1 update. Uh, and when DP 2.0 finally released, it tripled 
rates compared to 1.4, the data rates, up to roughly 80 gigabits per second, which is in frick insane. I just to put this into perspective for you. This is significantly higher than the current HDMI 2.1 standard, right? And allows for some pretty crazy resolution and refresh rate combinations. For instance, you could run a single 16K monitor at 60 Hertz in 10 frickin' bit with DSC. You could run two 8K displays at 120 Hertz in 10 bit with DSC. Or you could run three 4K monitors at 90 Hertz a piece in 10 bit, uncompressed, no DSC needed. You could theoretically hit refresh rates over 1000 Hertz in 1080p and well over 2000 Hertz in 720p. It's just freaking mind blowing. I mean, this is from a single display port connection and all on the back of significantly improved link efficiency over historical trends, much higher than the 80% average. Meaning we can utilize much more of that 80 gigabits per second than usual. It's, it's nuts. And I wish this was supported by the latest graphics cards in, in late 2020. I do just, just for the laws, not that we need it, but uh, the technology is just too new to incorporate to incorporate that version into a card like this, we'll be waiting probably another generation or two before support is included. And besides, something like this RTX 3070 here isn't capable of outputting anywhere near 240 frames per second in 4K lossless to make the 240 hertz refresh rate support meaningful. Um, it just it just wouldn't make sense. And I apologize if I'm more or less inconsistently alternating between refresh rate and frames per second. Obviously, frames per second, that's the amount of frames that the card pushes to the screen, but you need a refresh rate as high as the FPS being generated by the card to actually see that number of frames on the screen. We have a video talking about it. It's a very old video, I apologize, but uh, it should clear things up for you. Now, there's always gonna be someone in the comments that says, oh, I can get a 4K 240 Hertz on my RTX 3070 if I just drop a ton of in-game settings. I mean, I'm talking about practical applications here, okay? No one's gonna open up a 4K game and drop all of their settings to ultra low so they can hit 240 FPS. What's the point of 4K if all you're doing is increasing the resolution uh, of a game that looks like crap because you're playing in ultra low. It just doesn't, it, it, it's again, it's not practical. Um, if you're talking something like Minesweeper, okay, sure. But uh, AAA titles, it's just, it's, it's not attainable yet, especially in something like an RTX 3070. So hopefully this video has cleared up any concerns you might've had regarding monitor refresh rate and video output compatibility. Always reference the version of the connector before buying or risk either being resolution or refresh rate limited or both. The, actually, the most recent that I can remember, there's an issue with some motherboards, I believe, they had uh, HDMI ports that were only version 1.4 supported, uh, but they were motherboards for Ryzen APUs, or they supported Ryzen APUs, and the APUs themselves supported 4K60, but HDMI 1.4 only supported 4K30. So people were buying you know, these combos thinking, oh, I'm gonna get 4K60 playback for a media system, whatever, in my living room, and that wasn't the case. They were limited to 30, and it wasn't because of the CPU. It wasn't because the CPU couldn't keep up with that. Uh, it was because of the port, the interface. HDMI 1.4 doesn't support it. HDMI 2.0 does. That would have been a case where knowing about the resolution refresh rate supports between versions of the interface would have come in handy. Anyway, uh, probably a little late for that one, but I imagine the issue will come up again in the future, and that's another reason why I wanted to make this video. But if you're buying modern hardware, for the most part, you shouldn't, hopefully you don't, run into these issues. And again, it doesn't hurt to double check though, and make sure that you've got a cable that's rated for said version. You don't wanna be cable limited either, especially if the cable is pretty cheap to upgrade. Uh, I've included a link to these charts here that you're seeing in the video description. If you wanna check those out, maybe reference them in the future. Uh, I also included a bandwidth calculator just so you can play around with and kind of see how things uh, work out mathematically. If you enjoyed this one, or at least learned a thing or two, consider leaving a like and subscribing. I would appreciate that. Leave a comment down below, join our public Discord server, that's also linked, and stay tuned for the next one. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.